Hi folks, Damien here, aka Irish Trekkie, back with another Nerd Escape podcast. And with me as always, we have... Hello again, folks. It's myself, the Trek Collector. How the hell is everyone out in Star Trek land? Oh, everyone's excited, as am I. And I just realised I pointed the wrong way because we're doing something a bit different in this podcast. Hopefully it'll work. But uh, Chris, 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 we are 30 days as we record this. It may be a little sooner by the time it comes out. But we're on the yeah, road to discovery right now, my friend. It's it's unreal, isn't it? It just, you know, <laughs> I think over a year ago, we we're kind of waiting and waiting. We were just thinking around Christmas and then we got into this limbo. And then, my God, are we just getting everything drawn at us? It's brilliant. Um, I'm loving the promos. We've got our Klingon promos now kicking uh, kicking out on uh, Netflix. Or not on Netflix, sorry, I should be saying uh, on Twitter. Mm which is fairly, fairly funky and cool. So it's great. Yeah, exactly. And actually, the fact that you mentioned Netflix as well, they've kind of kicked up a gear as well. And they're starting to put out their promos across on Facebook, a little bit on Twitter as well. But yeah, we're really spoilt for choice now. And uh, some of the like the billboards are going up with the saucer section and the spacesuit on the top. And yeah, the, the hype is palpable. But um, we were talking off camera. We were wondering what we do in this week's podcast and uh, the subject of aliens came up because this is a sci-fi show set in a universe far in the future and uh so far chris we've seen sarek vulcan uh saru kelpian um and some and obviously klingons as well but um yeah other than that we were kind of brainstorming of who else we'd like to see uh, represented in star trek and uh yeah what, what kind of comes to your mind when you're thinking oh. of, of your wish list and you know uh, straight off like? <laughs> you know straight off who i'm going to mention tolians straight away <laughs> <Da-bing>. um <laughs> well again going back to one of my first theories was more so to do with the asteroid linking it in with enterprise uh in the mirror darkly um to me just judging by that I just seemed to be a tolian complex so when they were using that concept art i would assume that if they were going to use kind of to try and canonize Enterprise. Um, you know, that's kind of, you know, so my early theories with Discovery was that it was a stolen, uh, maybe the Tolians stole Federation and Klingon technology, and this was a hybrid. And the team of Discovery were going to go in and take back a ship. Mm. Eh, that's not going to be the case. It's well, and clearly that's not the case. But Tolians would be very, very cool. Um, Interesting to see if they do show up, what way they'll do them. Um, I don't think, in fairness to Enterprise, I don't think they did too much of a bad job with Tatalian. They did a lot better than they did with the Gorn. Um, To me, the CGI with the Gorn was not that good. Um, I preferred good old Bobby the Gorn in his costume. Um, You know, it it, it just just looked wrong in Enterprise. But uh, Tolians, Gorn, Orions... Tellerites, uh, Andorians. I think the Andorians are very popular from Enterprise. Andorians uh, and the Aenar, yeah. Shran was just such a brilliant character. It was Shran, wasn't it? It was indeed. It was uh, yeah. indeed. Yeah. A- absolutely fantastic. The Imperial and, Guard. Yeah. And, you know, it, Enterprise is so well. So Enterprise has touched on some of the founding members of the Federation. and uh, They brought them to life. Yeah. It would be nice to see Discovery continue this, but it's so, so wedge-packed with stuff, with this war. Well, the thing about it is the main drive for season one, anyway, um, is the Cold War. This Klingon shenanigans. And, you know, the fact that we saw Harry Mudd being brought into the equation as well means that, you know, war is a complex beast. And Mm. there's a lot of players involved. So, like, you you mentioned the Orions, and I was kind of thinking, like, the Nausicans and the Orions as well, because, like, war can be good business. And um, also, we were talking about Romulans as well, because yeah. this is a huge power struggle, potentially. I don't know how it's going to play out, but think about when you're looking at space, uh, the, the area, what's going on. The Klingon Empire, the Federation, Starfleet, and then you have the Romulans. Of course, they're going to have a vested interest in this. So will they be skulking around? Not directly involved, but wouldn't it be nice to see some, you know, sinister, sinister deeds happening? 
Yeah, I, I think it would be great that only known to the viewer is that what you got there is a secret Romulan plot. I would like to see um one or two Vulcan characters maybe towards the end end up being Romulan. Mm. Um but again according to Canon, you know what I mean? Maybe section thirty one might know. We don't know that part that was never established, but it'd be nice to see them involved in it as well. The contact between the Federation and Romulans is just kinda it doesn't happen. Um, yeah. Until I think about ten. Well, hang on. Trying to set the exact before Kirk takes command of the Enterprise and balance and terror and stuff like that. So it's not long until the Romulans remake their appearance. So yeah, it'd be kind of cool to see. You know, I I would love to see something from Romulus. Um, you know what I mean? Some kind of is there influence on this war? Are they? Pulling strings. Yeah, it's just that kind of house kind of, of cards effect where absolutely. it's not just one versus another. There's a lot of people involved in this. Yeah. Just for that depth of story. It'd be very cool. Oh, absolutely. Um, you, you know, the Romulans have never really had a great shot in a long time. Um, not for a while, yeah. No, they, they haven't, in fairness. And I know they were going to be... You know, they were going to be phased out the next generation and replaced by the Ferengi, but that just didn't work out. <laughs> and in, in one sense, I'm kind of glad it didn't because when the Ferengi kind of re-came back in, they were kind of reintroduced to us in Deep Space Nine. And I think they just made the Ferengi 10 times better. Um, oh, yeah. Kicked it up again. And it, it's great. Yeah, they did. They just, you know, they got, they got them much better, much better, uh, this whole greed, Latinum. And everything about them like Quark was just amazing and the Ferengi just grew from Deep Space Nine so and that's a good parallel that you brought up there actually that you know it wasn't until Deep Space Nine that we actually saw who Ferengi are you know yeah. their you know their rules of acquisition you know their political you know how they treat their women their family and stuff like that and we could strike that parallel now with Discovery that yes we know about the Klingons but now are we going to get that treatment that we're going to see them much, much deeper as well. Yeah, and maybe we'll get Ferengi in here as well, selling weapons to the Klingons again, or something. Technically, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't have any any Ferengis. But again, sneaking there's nothing to say that they can't be sneaking around in the background, just that the Federation don't know them, even though they did appear on Enterprise, but they never knew. And you see, again, it's a bit of a grey area here at the same time, is the crew were all awake on the Enterprise and they had phasers, Phase pistols pointing at them, getting them to put the stuff back. So surely they would have found out exactly who these aliens were. You know, they didn't really exactly were in the position to turn around and say that we're not going to say who we are anymore yeah. because they had weapons pointed at them. But anyway, we'll get over that grey area of uh, the Ferengi and Enterprise. But no, the Ferengi shouldn't technically show up. But yes, they can be somewhere in the background. But I think if you're going to bring in a species like this, I would rather it be... The Romulans, and I think that would be enough to go around. I do think there's enough beloved Star Trek characters that we would, or aliens that we'd like to see um, hit on the show that people kind of always know. And not even too much that they have to be a character. Maybe just a, just a clip just a on... Just a presence. Exactly. Like if the Europa, for example, going in and we that ship doesn't seem to last too long. But, you know, a, a flash of the crew... An Andorian captain or a Tellerite captain, which would be quite interesting. Wouldn't it be great to see Tellerites <laughs> just going at it? You know, <laughs> I think I think it would be. I, I I think this is one that I I know what you call it, a lot of people are saying. You know, some people aren't too fond of the Flo, uh, Flux character or the Rom. I loved Rom from D Space Nine. I thought mm. it was actually very very good. But the entertainment, the lighthearted entertainment value, I think. Tellerite is the perfect character for that kind of scenario because they're just argumentative. So, yeah. you know what I mean? If you had a young crewman cadet that's a Tellerite, just would be hilarious. That actually would be. And be interesting to see what they'd look like as well. Um, but, but, like, just think of them going in, like, if they have a galley or something like that and says, oh, your food is crap today. And the chef turns around and goes, how dare you insult my food like that, you know? Yeah, just, yeah. Be just that funny, banter. You know what I mean? Just the banter, yeah. You know, it just adds to the kind of universe, you know? It's not just... It, it, it kind of it breaks the wall of it being a TV show. It kind of brings you in, 
Um, yeah. Which would be kind of cool. And, you know, kind of tying it in with other series as well. I know we talked about Enterprise, but, you know, we have the animated series as well, where we had Arex, mm-hmm. uh, Edosian, and we had Emres as well, which was, uh, pronunciation is probably crap on this, but uh, Acacian. Acacian? Um, looked like a cat, basically. Um, yeah. But like that, you know, not not necessarily needs to be a fully fleshed out character, but just somewhere in the background or, you know, coming up with the data pad or something like that to kind of go, oh yeah, it's not just full of um, humans, you know, and the Kelpian, fan, fan, you know. Fan, fans would actually really, really appreciate that, but we do know that what you call it. I think the funny thing is when you kind of look at Game of Thrones and when what you call it, like the dragons come into it, you know what I mean? Everyone goes, there goes the CGI budget for that episode. <laughs> so I suppose CGI costs do kind of weigh in as well, you know, just to get these kind of fan favorites. But as I said, like if they were to bring back the Gorn, I do think if they're going to uh, look at doing the uh, Gorn again, they really need to, I, I, I think they really need to look at it from the TOS point of view. Now, it, yeah. it can still be CGI, but just on Enterprise, I just, I'm sorry, it failed miserably. Well, look at the caliber of production on this show already you know mm. if they do dabble in the gorn i'd have complete faith that it'll look epic you know but again story is king you know if it adds to the story if it adds to the believability um i'm all for it and um you know kind of i, I know they're not well loved by a lot of people but you know going back to enterprise we were talking about this before you know zindi denobulans you know you talked about flocks as well um, yeah, uh, F- F- Flox's character, like, okay, he-, he was one character on Enterprise and he was medical just that exchange. different. Yeah. yeah, he was that different perspective. Um, I've nothing wrong with his character. I can see why some people don't like that style of character. I just don't think, like, I haven't got that feeling in Discovery well, that we're getting one of these characters. You know what I mean? I think they've learned that, you know, they don't, you the fans don't really want a, a Wesley Crusher or this. Yeah. You might not need the I, character, but the the race, you know, the, the yeah, the nobulence. The nobulence, you know. I I'm, I won't be too pushed on seeing the nobulence. Uh, Zindi came out expanse, of nowhere, <laughs> the, and plus as well, the expanse is now gone. The Delta expanse has disappeared because it destroyed the spears. So that should be just open space. So there's no mm-hmm. issue between, you know what I mean, going into their space anymore or their realm, whatever you want to call it. But. Uh, uh, I don't know. Degra's descendants flying around, or you know, reptilians or insectoids. I, I, I personally wouldn't be too pushed to see this indie. Um, you know, to, just to me, nah, they did kind of come out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you brought up an, an interesting one as well, uh, Trill. You know? Yes. Um, yeah, you know, again, they always have been very interesting characters. You know, we've had Jadzia, Ezri, Kurzan, Dax. Um, but yeah, that, that could be an interesting little facet to add to, you know, maybe the kind of political side of things, you know, because we know we have Admiralty in the show. We have yeah. uh, Anderson. And there was another, was it confirmed? Maybe. Let me, let me know, because I can't remember if there was another Admiral uh, in the cast as well. But, you know, we could have Trill involved in that kind of echelons of Starfleet somewhere as well. Um, not to say, listen, we're only kind of surmising here, you know, we're not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. Let us know in the comments below. Um, but there's quite a, a, there's quite a resource to pull from when you're looking at 51 years of Star Trek. Um, oh, absolutely. From. But still, you know, being very timeline sensitive um, when they introduce, like they're not going to obviously throw in Cardassians or Kazan, you know, or Herogen. Oh nowhere. Well, you know. Kazon, Herosian are fairly, very far away. Exactly. Um, Cardassians would be interesting. Um, hmm. Great characters. Cardassians. Not so much in TNG, but great characters in D Space Nine. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't want to see them. I, I just think you'd be kind of... There's nothing to say. I know there's been Cardassian more, and it does sound as though the Federation do kind of know the Cardassians for quite a while um mm. to me i wouldn't like it touched upon in this time kind of time period i like to kind of i think realistically you know let's look at what canon has established around this time period and focus on those aliens as i don't think anyone would mind the trills too much because it has kind of been like J- jadzita has kind of said previously with our previous hosts and so forth like that yeah 
Um, you know what I mean? I mean, not a Curzon was around with the likes of Core. So, you know, mm-hmm. Core goes back to Kirk's time as well. So that ties in. That's fine. To me yeah. personally, I would like to kind of focus more on the TOS style aliens. If you were to drag in aliens them. F- from Enterprise. Ooh. You kind of build that bridge. You know, it's not necessary, but it could be interesting yeah. depending on how it adds to the story. Yeah, I, as I said, I'd, I'd like to see the back plot with definitely the the Romulans. I think that would be very, very cool. Mm. Um, you know, everyone kind of hinted as well that Discovery could be to do with Section 31 back in the early days because 1031, which is interesting. To, you know what I mean? It's so <laughs> funny, all these theories that everyone was coming out with back in the day. Um, I can't really see too much of it. Well, Will Section 31 get mentioned in this? It'd be fairly interesting. Could happen. That's it. We are at the height of war. So, you know, obviously not too many people at Starfleet are going to know about this. So, you know, at, we, we know Section 31 is fairly, fairly hush, hush. Yeah. It would be interesting. And, you know, an interesting point that came to, uh, was brought to my attention there was a couple of weeks back. You know, you mentioned about Section 31 because of the, uh, registry of the ship but um the shuttle discovery its registry was ov or Z, uh, ov 103 as well which i thought was a nice little potentially strike you know uh, as regards to the registry of the ship but um you know yeah i definitely agree with you on the romulan side of things um for me personally that would be really good i'd also like to see the likes of the the underbelly of the area getting involved you know gun running kind of feeding the flames of war so like the Nausicans, Orions, Gorn all that kind of scumminess you know kind of dirtying up the kind of utopian society not very much mm. but just to kind of get that little depth it doesn't necessarily need to interact with the main story but just gives an extra little layer of plausibility in, in some aspects of it as well but um, yeah yeah because it'd be nice to kind of see uh, what Hardy Mudd I'm sure, like, the likes of the Orions um, would be kind of his type of people to hang around with. Um, Nausicans as well. So it could kind of be interesting to, mm. to see a plot. Um, it could p- kind of be an interesting way that what you got to come across Hardy Mud, either being chased by an Orion ship or a Nausicaan ship. And, you know, Federation ship comes along and yeah. tries to help him out. And uh, Hardy Mudd decides to return the favour by trying to either destroy the Discovery or rob the Discovery. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time he's tried that before. Yeah. Well, he hasn't done it yet. <laughs> he hasn't you know? done it, exactly. Is he on board the Discovery because it's some sort of, you know, they're creating a new way to fly. Like, is there new tech on yeah, this that he now, wants, you know? Because we saw him on a ship of some sort, whether it was in whatever part of the ship he was in, I don't know, but... It's hard to know what he's going to be involved in. I think that's engineering. Could be. Could be. I think that's engineering. I I pointed it out with one thing. It it just... And I think it was Dave that spotted it as well. And Dave's been on the podcast before as well. We were kind of looking through the trailer and all that. Kind of like looked as though it was kind of like a bit of a glass. That kind of was very TMP. Um, No, that's not the motion picture. The Rattacan, Mm. where Spock kind of... And Spock died and held up his hand could be um yeah so we i i do i think that is definitely engineering um not that we've seen too much of it but there's like there's consoles that looks fairly cool but uh yeah a new way to fly that's kind of interesting and i know a theory's gone around could this be the start of trans warp which you know it makes sense is this why the discovery in the cells are long um again it's fitting into the, the universe of the Star Trek because when you look at the Excelsior she had quite long nacelles so mm-hmm. I think if they are tr- if this is the start of trying to develop transwarp technology I think that is going to be fairly fairly cool and I think the theory if I remember right was transwarp only worked because they were using transwarp uh, corridors uh, around Federation space so that's where the transwarp worked but without those car- corridors it failed. Hmm. So um, it's quite interesting. And I think those trans warp, I think it later on, then fans theorized that those corridors were actually Borg. Um, the conduits. So yeah. yeah. Borg conduits, yeah. So it's just kind of interesting enough. But yeah, it, it would be very interesting to see is this the start 
of trans warp. Is this the reason why Discovery has these long nacelles? That's it. It would be cool. But, you know, again, at the end of the day is, will they explain it? Not necessarily. We're just going to have to wait and see. Are they going to explain the Klingon look? Not necessarily. We just have to wait and see. Well, they did. Was... Um, the, there was the reasoning came out. Neville Page was saying that uh, they're a predatory species and those dimples, holes, are sensory. So obviously you don't want to encumbus, uh, encumber that, that with... That uh, does not explain why they look that way, man. This, the reason <laughs> they don't have hair is because they don't want to encumber those... Uh, <laughs> Sensor palace, whatever you want to call them, on it. But there was some, there was some. Uh, I'm knocking my camera yeah, over just, here. Yeah. But there was some explanation to it anyway. Yeah, that that, that, that but, doesn't um, work with me. But anyway, I, I don't yeah, care. I, I you know, I'm like gonna it. accept them for what they are. You know what I mean? I think it'll make look, sense production when volumes. we see it and the story. Are, are you that explain. worried though at the moment? Because it's just this looks. This looks as though it's going to just be an amazing show. Um, 100%. You know, are we going to get hung up about the nitty gritties at the moment? No. Yeah. Okay, maybe afterwards, but you know, I mean, look, come here. As you said, it's the story's there, uh, and it looks good. Story's king. It's gonna, it's gonna be. It's it, look. I, I'm dying for this. It's, it's, it's around the corner now. Um, really can't wait. I am hoping that I'll be able to see it bright and early Sunday morning, uh, or Monday morning. Um, I'll be looking forward to staying up and watching it. Um. But yeah, it, it looks it looks as though it's going to be great. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, we've given you quite a good list, and uh, be interested to hear what you'd like added to that list, or if you agree with us in certain points, you know, let us know in the comments below. But um, what we'll do is we'll wrap it up there, and uh, stay tuned for next week's episode as we continue down the road to discovery. Uh, roll on Mar September, actually, twenty fourth and twenty fifth. So, um, as always, um, check out the box below for this guy's fantastic YouTube page and our Joint Discovery Facebook page as well. Great conversation over there, and it's great to share in the hype with everyone as well. But, um, yeah, listen, thanks for watching today. And, uh, as always, it's goodbye from me. Kapla. <laughs> Slanga fall, <laughs> Until the next time. And we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. <laughs>